Happy Moon, happy Red Friday. Wearing my patriotic cat, 4th of July cat, whatever. All right, so today I'm just doing something fun. I have acquired three new plants. This is Medusa, and it is a carnivorous plant that I just transplanted. These are native to North Carolina, and they're really, really cool. And I purchased these a few days ago, so I want to get them in fresh soil because I don't know how long they've been in the, the soil in the nursery. So this is Medusa. This right here is Marlow, and that one is Mimsy. And when you transplant the carnivorous plant, they're a little bit different than like, you know, say a regular plant. Um, you have to use, well, I'm using a sphagnum peat moss and a perlite mix. And you want something that doesn't have, um, you know, added nutrients, vitamins, or things like that. The soil for the carnivorous plants always needs to be wet. It's, it's actually always going to be in, in standing water. And it's going to be, this is actually distilled. It's not, I just pour the distilled from my gallon jug. That way I don't make a mess when I do pour. But you just pour a little bit in the bottom. And you, you have to always make sure that that has water in it. You know, I'm just using a little catch plate. And then every day I check it. I usually have to add a little bit of water every day. You don't want this to dry out because the carnivorous plant needs to always be moist. So once you put your um, your mix, see I bought this already mixed. This is a killer plant company, carnivorous plant, so you can buy it separate. Um, I just wanted to do something easy, so I just bought it already put together. And it, it takes a little bit to get this really saturated. In fact, I will let it set for a little bit and then I will add more water if necessary. So unlike irregular plants, if you're transplanting, you are going to actually take the roots out of the soil. And you got to kind of be gentle. And it, the soil stinks. You want these roots, but you want to take the actual soil off these roots, which we don't usually do it like this with a, like transplanting a regular plant or something. But anyways, that's how you do it. You get all that soil off. Then you just kind of press down in here in the hole. And you're going to place your, your plant in there. I need a little bit more soil though. So, because I want it to be kind of close to the top. Alright. Do, do, do. Put more water and yes this is a messy job but it's okay so then you take your carnivorous plant and just like you would any other regular plant and yeah put it in there and the carnivorous plant this is a the venus flytrap and they're supposed to be very colorful so if you have them that you know, they're not very, you know, colorful and they're dark. That means they need fresh soil. Um, so that's kind of why I've got one head on here that's very dark. Um, you can't really see it, but it's right here. It's very dark. I don't like the look of it. That's why I'm changing the soil. And where I got these, to be quite honest, they didn't look that great. So I picked the best ones. Um, but I've always wanted the Venus flytrap. And the reason I, I had, I have three is because I have a growing station in my house. I'll show you in a minute. I'll just pan on it. Um, you know, when you have soil in your house and you have house, house plants, you have those little flies, gnats, and things. These are wonderful for that. And since I got these, they already started to work you know, getting those things. So let me clean this up a little bit and I'll be right back. Okay, so I had to wash my hands um, 
Marlo has been transplanted here. But what I wanted to show you, why well, I had to clean my hands, let me come up closer, is right here, this, I don't know if you can see it, but it's really black, very, very black. And that's not a healthy um, head. So you can cut them off and they will regrow. And like if I wanted to make more of these plants, what I would have to do is split the heads and make sure that I have a root system with the one that I'm going to split. Um, that one, yeah, that one doesn't look good at all. Now when the heads are open, that means, you know, they're ready to feed. And this one on Mim uh, Medusa here, I have one open. The rest of them are all closed. So that means, A, they have an insect in there and they will remain closed for anywhere from 7 to 20 days, however long it takes to digest that bug. Now if the sensors try to close and they miss the insect, it will reopen within 24 hours. So that is why I know that these guys have been uh, very good so far because, you know, they're pretty much all closed except for that one and they were pretty much open when I got them. So let me pop this one up. This is uh, Mimsy. And then I will show you um, where they're placed in the house to help with those flies. Back in a second. So after you transplant these, they may look a little um, wilty for a couple of days, but they will bounce back once they get used to the new soil and whatnot. And remember the distilled water. So let me show you where I'm going to place these guys. Well, this Marlo, uh, Medusa stays right here underneath the arrow garden and next to these house plants. Decided to put Mimsy out here. Mimsy was in my day room. So Mimsy's gonna be out here and Marlo's gonna be in the day room. So these are my plants. It's a bonsai shamrock that there is a succulent, another succulent, and down there is another succulent. That is a Rex. I forget the second part to it, but its name is Rex. <laughs> my aloe vera. Then I have a coffee plant right there, and right over here we have some Japanese holly and a lily that my cats destroyed that I'm trying to bring back to life. Marla will be here in the day room. This is another growing station. Like I said, this soil does need more water, but I don't want to overflow and have a mess. So I'll add more in a little while. So there is, um, right next to it is my, it's just radishes and, um, what is it, spinach. And here we've got a lemon tree with some buds on it or flowers. And then this is the growing station with some more plants. This is a um, Mammy Croton or Croton Mammy, I forget. This is gold dust. This is a coffee plant. Then we have Swiss chard and some spinach. Those are some Danvers carrots coming up right there. And then some lettuce and then another lemon tree. And then over here we have a Oh, ponytail palm, that's what that's called. And then if I spin you, hope I don't make you dizzy, that right there is a mass cane. And then I'm going to spin you one more time. That is a D. Effenbachia. So they're very, um, they're really, really neat looking. I just, I love that. And the kids were so excited, you know, to have these. So, I have expanded my um, my growing needs, so now I need to grow the um, Venus flytrap. And it's a good thing that they're in the small containers because I pretty much used 
the entire bag of this. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Smack the peat moss and the perlite mix. Anyway, so I hope you all have a are having a great weekend and uh, stay cool because it is. I'm filming this today on Friday. It's like 95 degrees in my area, and over the weekend Saturday is supposed to be even hotter. So stay cool, and until next time, bye.